Welcome back, MTG Joe here. We're on the eve of the new uh, set, Ikoria, uh, for the early streamer event. Uh, so I'll be participating in it to thanks to Wizards. I get uh, access before the public a day early. Uh, God account, get to play with all the cards. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of brews. You can check them all out on my Aether Hub page. There's 20 plus deck lists for the new set, uh, varied from colors, themes, archetypes. Um, but the one thing that a lot of people swing by the channel for are budget lists. This is a, a quick budget one for now. Uh, there will be many budget ones coming up in the next couple weeks. Uh, usually I like to play around with the format a bit, get to see what's kind of the standout cards at common and uncommon, and then I can put together a lot more deck lists. We can do budget build series, stuff like that. So for those of you who are tuning in for budget content, it will come. Uh, I need to get familiarized with the new set first, so keep that in mind. Uh, as I mentioned at the get-go, I will be participating in the streamer event. I'll be live on Twitch around 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, uh, April 15th. So if you can swing by, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, come hang out, play some games, check out the new cards. If not, all my videos that we play from that day, all the gameplays will be up on YouTube shortly thereafter, so you can catch all the content there. As always, if you do enjoy the content before we dive into this deck tech, uh, if you can, uh, drop a subscribe on YouTube or a follow on Twitch. Both are free and easy ways to help support the channel. Uh, it'd be awesome if you could. But now into the goods. Uh, Mono Blue Tempo Flash. Um, so this deck list, the full 75, is only four rare wild cards, four mythic wild cards. So relatively cheap. Uh, and it is something that can transform into... Blue black flash, green uh, blue flash, uh, blue white flash, if you want to play kind of more of that kind of game, uh, salt eye flash. So it's kind of the good shell, and that will allow you to kind of build out towards that. So, what we're basically trying to do is play all our spells on our opponent's turn. Uh, tempo deck is generally one that's kind of disruptive. It's got like elements of aggression with elements of control, but it's not looking to necessarily go the long game. You want to disrupt your opponent while putting pressure on them. So how we do that is playing a deck full of flashcards. Um, so what we want to do is either counter opponent spell, if not flash in a creature, and then protect the creature or attack into the opponent. So we have four spectral sailors, comes down on turn one. Um, I'll feature the creatures first, and then we'll kind of pull in the support elements. So this is a flash creature flying and late game we can pump mana into to draw cards. So it scales well early game and late game which is good. Uh, Brineborn Cutthroat is really the engine of these mono blue lists. Uh, if you get it down on turn two, basically every time you play a spell on your opponent's turn it gets a counter on it. So this is kind of our beater, our Tarmogoyf if you would, in these uh, archetypes. One of the new cards that got spoiled and uh, came out of Ikoria is Cunning Night Bonder. So it's a hybrid blue-black, but we just cast for the blue in here. It's a flash 2-2. Two -two. Um, spells with flash you cast cost one less, so it's reduction on our other flash creatures, as well as Omen of the Seas, and they can't be countered. So it allows us to get creatures in that are uncounterable in that case. It's also non-legendary, so we can stack multiples of these to get multiple cost reductions in place. Um, we have four Brazen Borrowers. Again, this is a very versatile card. This is where we're spending four of our Mythic Wild cards. Uh, this gets played in a ton of lists. Uh, if you're playing blue, you will have some number of these probably in your deck, so it's not like a bad craft. Um, the Petty Theft side is a bounce effect for any of your opponent's permanents. Particularly good, say, with Mutate effects. Your opponent is stacking a bunch of creatures there. Yeah, they get the Mutate ability, but you can get rid of it and bounce it all back to their hand, and now they spent all this tempo and uh, time setting up this monster that you send back for two mana. Uh, and then it's also a 3-1 flyer, which is a decent clock on its own. Uh, and then finally, the last creature in the deck is Sea Dasher Octopus. So this is a new card from the set. It's a three mana, two, two flash. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, but you could also mutate it at instant speed onto another one of your creatures. So you can go Spectral Sailor on one, flash this in on top of the uh, sailor and now you can attack in with that and it draws you a card so it's kind of a instant speed curious obsession with the creature stapled onto it so really useful there so basically those are our wild cards in the deck everything else is common or common so it's really cheap to build um, so kind of now piecing together the deck uh, you have a couple ops 
Um, normally this these decks will play four ops, but I'm opting to go with, pun intended, uh, Omen of the Sea. Now, Omen of the Sea with Night Bonder gets cheaper, so it's only one mana. It scries us one further, and then it also has the upside of late game. We can just pump mana into it to set up our future draws. If we're running out of stuff or we need to find a particular answer, uh, we're able to do stuff like that. Um, we have three quench. Uh, we want a turn two counter spell. Uh, it's not as good late game, but it is something that at least could screw up your opponent's draws. And it's something that on the play, you can stop a Teferi from coming down. Um, in this particular build, I'm doing two Mystical Disputes main. Um, this is kind of a card that, depending on how the meta shapes up, may be better served with playing Aethergust main. Um, the reason I like Dispute over Aethergust main in an unknown meta is Dispute still has text regardless of whether you're playing a blue base deck or not. At worst case, it's a three mana pay three, uh, like mana leak. Aethergust in certain matchups just doesn't have targets. Um, so if the meta is heavily green red based, then yeah, put your Aether Gus in. It's a very good tempo card in the main board. Uh, if not, those are you'll see them in the sideboard that we can play. And then four Sinister Sabotage. Uh, I went back and forth between this counter spell and the new one that can cycle. Uh, probably the Surveil is a little bit better to set up your hands. So these are our hard counters that uh, will always deal with your opponent's spells. Mana base is 20 Islands uh, and one Mystic Sanctuary. Mystic Sanctuary can help you recycle spells. Um, for ultimate tilt, you want to pick 20 different art islands just to piss off your opponent. Uh, when we were playing the budget version of the old uh, pre Ikoria one, we made sure to do that and just kind of tilt your opponent a little bit more. Um, so this sideboard is completely in the dark without knowing the meta, so this will likely change over time, but I put together some cards that would be useful depending on certain meta types. Um, Aether Gust does a four of, deals with red, deals with green, all the ultimatums. Uh, if people are trying to stack up monsters, you see Abzan as a wedge, you see Mardu as a wedge. So there's a lot of ways you could kind of attack that. Sultai, um, a couple Cerulean Drakes, if red-based aggro decks, uh, like Rakdos decks are still a thing, this is a good blocker in those cases. Uh, a couple Essence Captures, uh, they have Essence Scatter uh, spoiled. So if you're playing a two-color deck, I would go with a Essence Scatter scatter because it's easier on the mana in our particular build because our mana base is all blue uh, this is better because you can potentially put counters onto your creatures uh, then we have a couple ashiok dream renders um, the abzan wedge and golgari seems very intent and even saltai for that matter putting stuff into your graveyard and then reanimating it um, and then you have uros stuff like that so ashiok does a good job of exiling their graveyards and then another Mystical Dispute, just a hedge in the matchups. This could be a Negate. This could be a Disdainful Stroke. Uh, this is really up to you what you want to put in. Uh, and then uh, Chemister's Insight. Uh, generally for Chemister's Insight, if it's a, a longer matchup, something more grindy, uh, I like Insight because it nets you more cards that way. You can effectively net four cards for the price of one over some turns, and you can ditch like lands or stuff like that um, when you play it through. Uh, if you do have the wild cards, or if you do have the cards kind of through packs or stuff, a couple Castle Vantress would be good in here just to filter out your draw. Um, usually in these blaze, yeah, base blue decks, I do like the Ugin Planeswalker, um, usually one of in the sideboard for matchups where you might see Ceratops. Uh, Ceratops will basically kill this deck, um, so you want ways to kind of play around that. I did feature a blue black version uh, a non-budget version of the deck uh, that one there will have actual removal uh, in the sideboard stuff like noxious grasp or heartless offering so there's ways to deal with it a little bit better but in a base blue version ugin's probably the cleanest way to deal with it there um, so it's pretty much the deck uh, let me know what you think uh, as always uh, you can catch all my content on my youtube channel i hope to see you tomorrow uh, while we stream uh, if you have any questions comments critiques very much open to reception and feedback. Otherwise, stay safe out there and happy Ikoria release, however you, could, you take it in. Have a great one.